one thing that I know that I can talk about as far as when it comes to us and 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 the who we are in this industry or the correlation between us and and what has occurred or how we've managed to to stick it out and be here for so long. I think a lot of it mm. is it's just based in, you know, uh, at some point I figured out that my competition was myself. Um, yeah. that I was I was I was not here to 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 compete with who's up and coming. Kill a killer. Oh, 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 Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London or central as you need to be for the pursuit of street culture. If you know that's a sport in arts, and if you've got the television app, you know what time it is. Free download, iPhone, Android for your sport podcast, mini docs, big docs, DJ mixes, and more. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. Um, and yo, you know what time it is? We're live right about now, transmitting. All the way over to the States in an undisclosed location. But a new album, so many other realities exist, which is definitely a calling to my man's career. He has been part of the hip hop tapestry for about 26 plus years. I could count it because it was one of the early doors. He's one of the first people I, I met on the tour of America. Um, and he's continued to deliver high class content music and more. He goes by the name of Slug. Hold tight. Rhymes to say it's atmosphere inside the place. How are we, my brother? Man, we're good. How are you? How are you? Hey, we're there. We're there. We're, we're, we're there. The, 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 the time difference is not paying us um, any uh, any mind right now. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast, brother. Hey, man. Thank you for having me, man. I, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> uh, and a very full uh, lineup of uh, activities you got going on with uh, with promo and all the beautiful stuff that happens in in this time of, uh, of a new album release, I'm sure, huh? Uh, yeah, you know, it's the it's we're, we're in the cycle, you know, and it's crazy because nowadays the cycle, they, they say words like content. And, and I and I remember before it was just kind of like, oh, you're in a campaign. Now it's like, OK, you got content and it's been kind of fun, uh, especially, you know, I think that t- during the the lockdown or whatever, I, I became more familiar with like what content is and what it means and and now i'm like oh this is interesting it's like it's like it's like a new it's kind of like a new game for an old person like me you know i'm like 80 mm. right old as hell bro <laughs> and so when we used to drop records back in the day you just used to hang a poster on the wall and be like hey there's a new record out go buy it now it, it feels like we're back to hanging posters on walls <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, right like, yo yo go get, get, put this on your digital wall and, that's called uh, a physical nft <laughs> <laughs> we are inside of the we are inside of the sometimes i think my kids have been sent back from the future to kill me you got kids <laughs> no but i get you i get you i get the yeah, analogy man. <laughs> they're, they're designed to remind you that um all, all the wrongs and right they just just basically to kick you in the ass right <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. Um, well, so the, the, our story starts, my friend, in, in a very sepia time of the late 90s, uh, 1999 to be precise, where I travelled with a band of merry men called the Russian Percussion, a la DJ Vadim, big up Vadim, and a whole Ninja Tune crew. And we went to Minneapolis, which is where my first introduction to you live, I like to say before anybody else in the UK, I witnessed something of seismic proportion that really did mirror the the kind of quote unquote backpacker era of the time, except it was just a whole different kind of flavor being from Minneapolis, man. Um, I, we were just talking about it before we started recording, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and I have vague memories of that evening because, um, as you said, it was a, a time where I got to meet some other artists who are from out of town, and that always resonates. But it, it, it usually is more like like I was trying to tell you, I couldn't even remember the venue we were at. Um, so it's like it's like I carry that that moment in time with me based on the meeting of you guys, less on the actual in living in the moment, like playing mm. the show. I don't remember playing a show. You know what I mean? It's like none of that all that stuff goes away. Yeah, you know, <laughs> let me preface all of this with saying I'm kind of a burnout. You know what I'm saying? Like I've 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 been I've been through the ringer and so so everything kind of blends together at this point. And I kind of like it that way because it makes this kind of like kaleidoscopic kind of uh 
vision for me when I'm when I'm when I'm when I'm going through nostalgia. Yeah, I said nostalgia. Sh- Nas should name a song called Nostalgia. Wait, has he done that? Yeah, uh, that, it, that's definitely that's definitely a, a pun that needs to be dropped ASAP he, on him. He, man. Yeah, even just a song, <laughs> Nostalgia, where he just comes down memory lane with us. That would be L- oh, he would kill that. Dude, lyricists like yourself go through these uh, portals of inter- internal dialogue about puns and in lyrics and syllabies and seminoles and all these sorts of crazy words that I can't even pronounce. This is the day in the life of a mind, of a, of a, of a, of a fully functioning MC, right? I mean, it's visceral. It's like, you know, yeah, words are shapes. They're, they're, they're you know, they're... Their symbols, uh, letters are, and they come together to create these things. And so you, you see the you see the you see the letters. It's like hieroglyphics in your head. And so you know when you piece them together, oftentimes, and you kind of have to do that, especially especially if you if you came up freestyling. You know, mm. if you had to, if you had to spit with 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 you know with no preconceived idea of where you're going to go with it, you start to see the words because you got to find the rhymes in them while you're also trying to think of what to say. You know what I'm saying? Oh. And so it's like. It's 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 at least for me, and I and I know I've had this conversation with homies. You know, it's a it's a visceral moment, and it's very desperate too. And so it's oftentimes I am talking as fast as I'm thinking. Probably not really. Uh, that's just a bumper sticker. But I'm t- I'm 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 thinking it and speaking it. Man, I'm freestyling right now. You just yeah. you, you find that space, you know, and you go, okay, how much can I bullshit about this before they catch <laughs> on to the catch on to the fact that I'm just running, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. And the, the, the quicker you can do that, the more fun, the, the, the happier your life will be. <laughs> the more, I, the more the roller coaster life will be. I, I believe that. I do believe that. I subscribe to that. But you just said a second ago that uh, of your time in the industry, things become a bit of a burnout. You're, you're of, of sorts a burnout because of the the um, the referencing, the historical timeline of it all. But, but there is this the compartmentalizing of uh, lyrics and the way MCs uh, develop and hone their craft. It's far from it's far from burnout. It's almost like it becomes single lane and all you actually end up doing is thinking about music and bars. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I want to, I want to apologize. Cause when I said that I wasn't even referencing the timeline or the industry or the bars or that, I just meant the beers. I've had so many beers <laughs> and, 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 and blunts that I'm pretty much a burnout at this point. So yeah, that's why you. the memory kind of all goes together. It's like you said, 1999, if you would have asked me like, what year was that? I would have been like, I don't know, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's like, yeah, and so it's not, and it's not because of the the bar, but it's more just kind of like, okay, I would have to like try to figure out, okay, where was I? What was my job? Ninety nine, I was still working at the Electric Fetus Record Store. That makes total sense, uh, mm-hmm. and that was kind of the height of, you know, I mean, it was like, it was like, I won't say the height, but it was when, it was when like I started seeing in retail more and more stuff coming through from you know europe eastern europe russia you know ninja mm-hmm. tune was ninja tune was popping at the time you know what i'm saying yeah. and i did a record with vadim it was it was that record out already did we perform I, that at that show yes I, I we remember. that's right exactly ah, that man exactly okay that. yeah 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 i can't See, imagine it was despawn but there was there was a there was definitely another mc that you were with at that time that was might have been idea in 99 idea that's right yeah yeah rest that's in right. peace that was idea Oh, he passed away? Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid oh, so. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Rest in peace, idea. Wow. Life has a many twists and turns. And as you get older, you really do value those moments, don't you? They, like you said at the start, you know, those moments where a person will come into town or the moment you release your first record on wax. These things really are whole. They almost, they almost, imprint the timeline don't they yeah yeah you know it's almost like a we call them core memories for the kids and so mm. you can't you gotta you know for adults the imprint on the timeline i think is good you know what i like about it is that um you know you and i met and we were both there but the likelihood of us having the same experience is impossible you, our experiences were different you were on tour and you yeah. were on tour through the u.s maybe your first u.s tour i don't know For and sure. 
Okay. And so your experience was informed by all of this, like, wonder or curiosity or disappointment or who knows what you were experiencing while you're in the U.S. right on tour because tours can be hard. I'm not dumb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been on a couple of them. You sure and, then, and And so it's like uh, my experience is I was probably um, going to take a cab home that night after the show and, you know, mm-hmm. go to sleep and wake up tomorrow and take, you know, eat, eat an omelet and go work in a record store. You know what I mean? So I'm in a slower pace and whatever, whatever. And it's like, and then my experience was I was with the people I was with, you were the people that you were with, and then we just touched off on how one of them had passed away. And all of this is the the tales coming out of this one experience that, like, honestly, I didn't even remember happening like I, if, if, <laughs> until you said it at the beginning of this. I was just like, oh, yeah, that happened. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's 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 pretty interesting and crazy mm. how, how, like, uh I don't know, man. Like how how it all ties together. It's it's got to be a simulation, right? For that, sure. this, that's what the show is about. The show is about the conspiracy, right? We're here to talk about the Great Reset. <laughs> what, what's going on? Uh, I'm Stop here it! For it man. Our algorithms are going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's just a joke, Mom. Um, Minneapolis. I mean, that's always been not only you know affection for my part in that I'd performed there, but you know just. The, the open-mindedness of music, I think that is very much a reflection on atmosphere as an artist at large. I, I feel like it's a different, not only is it a different take from a rap point of view, but even music has been very much, it's been very much the case. It's, it's been a sponge, hasn't it? It's been a sponge from the rest of the, uh, the rest of the goings on in the States and the world, right? I mean, you know, I'm glad you said open-mindedness because the first thing that popped in my head is that if if you appreciate our music, you're probably a pretty open-minded person. For sure. <laughs> uh, with that said, you know, I mean, I, I think that the the doctor's still out on this one, man. I'm it's still I'm I'm still processing all of this. I still don't really know what a lot of this is and what it means. I'm 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 kind of just following um my fate following my decision making down the road, you know, picking left or right every time I hit a fork. And I, I don't know what to make of all of it. One thing that I know that I can talk about as far as when it comes to us and 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 the who we are in this industry or the correlation between us and, and what has occurred or how we've managed to to stick it out and be here for so long. I think a lot of it mm. is it's just based in, you know, uh, at some point I figured out that my competition was myself. Um, that I was, I was, I was not here to 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 compete with who's up and coming. I wasn't here to compete with my elders, the people that I looked up to. I, yeah. I, I established when when I established my own space, my own. I don't want to say lane because there's other people in my lane. Sorry, there's other people in this lane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I would say um, I established who I am, and and I. I became okay with that. I embraced it. I, I was obviously okay with that. And so with that said, I'm okay with wherever this goes for better, for worse, even, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's one of the things where it's like at this point now, if you guys fired me tomorrow and told me, don't, don't come back to work, you're done mm-hmm. here. Then I would just find another, I've learned so much doing this. I've been doing this for so long and I've been able to take in so much information that I would just find another space to 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 work within to still try to make sure that I'm playing a role in bringing music that I believe in to people that would love it. You know what I'm saying? And so even if it wasn't my music, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like with that said, I'm now me and Anthony when we make records with each other, um all we're trying to do is make the best thing that we are capable of making in that moment, but also make each other react, make each other have a, some sort of reaction. Did I make him laugh or did I make him go, whoa, or did I make him feel uneasy or did I do something that like a film? Did I do something mm. to make him react like a book? Did I do something to to get some sort of reaction out of him? And we ain't been fired yet. So mm-hmm, I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm just going to stick with it. You know what I'm saying? I'll keep going. It's the best job I've ever had. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to keep sticking with it. And you know, it's funny because I think about the challenging that occurs and, you know, um, there are challenges to, to trying to do this, you know, for, 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 if this is something like, if you're a listener right now, and this is something that you want to do with your life, there are challenges, but in many ways you get to create and shape what those challenges are going to look like. You don't have to settle for the challenges that are brought to you. You can step outside of those boxes and find ways to challenge yourself so that when you own those challenges, not only 
are you really elevating? You're not just playing the game, but you're learning about you. You're learning about your true limitations. You're, you're learning, you know, you, you just, you know, just figure out how to set those challenges for yourself. And I think that's what me and Anthony have figured out in the process of making this music. Mm. maybe performing it as well you know i could talk for a long time about that as well maybe how we present it when we perform live because that's another really large part of what him and i do is we make these records probably too many and then we go out and we play the shows probably too many but it's what we enjoy so we just keep keep at it you know what i mean and, and mm. make sure that we're and make sure that we're just kind of presenting the best that we can present in that moment and you know just like anybody man we all have a bad day at work Mm. I that could happen to me if I was making sandwiches that could happen to me if I was you know babysitting your pets whatever we all have a bad day at work you know what I mean and so it's mm -hmm. like so w with that said I'm having a pretty good day today <laughs> yeah come on baby <laughs> how um, about you yeah good I'm big up Anthony as well um so okay I don't even know if that answered your question. Listen, no, no, man, there's I, a couple of things to unpack there, which I quite like. Okay. Um, I talk a lot. And if you ever hear me talking too much, our safe word is penguin. Just say penguin <laughs> and, I, and I will shut the fuck up I, and fall in line. Bro. I'm with it, I'm with it, I'm with it. Um, right, so a bit to unpack there. So from a, from a, um, from a, in a peace level, what you're talking about there is essentially rare at an early age. You have to find the challenges within yourself and I, and I think for a lot of young people who who may be watching respect always um you've got a lot to teach us too um but to get to the point where ego aside anxiety aside um peer pressure from family and other and and all of these factors that that really do differ from that that self-containing of oh, i am gonna just challenge myself like it takes quite a lot to get to that point at what age did you get to that point slug well you know i think i might have been a late bloomer i probably got to that point around the time i was 30 but in hindsight what i could say is this prior to 30 when i was driving trucks mm. or delivering pizzas or you know i was a young father i had my first son when i was 21 um or I was the oldest of three. I had two siblings. Mm -hmm. All those things you just described, the anxieties, the pressures from other people, the judgment, the things that you, you know, those exist regardless of whether or not you're trying to make art. So and true. Once, and once you recognize that, that's when you can compartmentalize them and don't include them in your art. Make mm. your art different challenges. You know what I'm saying? It's like find the challenges in what you're trying to do, whether you're rapping or DJing or whatever. Find find the challenges that you create. Because all them other life challenges, you're going to have to deal with those anyway. You could, mm. you could drop the mic right now. You could drop the turntables right now. You're still going to have those challenges. That is yeah, not that is that is not something that comes from art. Art is beautiful. Mm. Everything about it is beautiful. And so when you're working in an industry and you feel like the industry is working against you, just remember it, it, it's not because of your art. It's because you're talking yeah. industry now. Yeah. You're talking, you're talking about job shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not the art. Your art, mm. you got to find ways to challenge yourself in the art. I wish I would have known this even at 30, to keep it real. Because when I really think about it, I think I should have known it. And I was blind to it or something. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I should have known it. But, 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 but yeah. And, and I think that's the important part that we don't tell these people. You know, we, you know, what we tell these people, here's the thing, man. Here's what we tell these kids. Go on. And this is, and it's whack. And I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I'm going to call it out right now. Good. We, we tell them that this is easy. Yes. Yeah, we, 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 we tell them that it comes natural. And visually as well on social media. Yeah, yeah, as if it's like talent that you can't attain. No, yeah, we tell them that I grew up like this. Yes. We right. show them all this shit because we don't want them to know that all it takes is is dedication. They don't want the illusion being broken, basically. Yeah. 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 I agree. I agree. You know, and, 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 and so and so we gotta quit making it look easy. Yeah. And, and and when I say we, I ain't even talking about you and me. I'm just talking about in general, on a collective, whole. Yeah. Yeah, collective. We got to quit making it look easy. We got to quit making it look natural. We got to let people know how heartbreaking this shit really can be. We yeah. got to let people know that it's not a uh, I'm supposed to be here and you're not situation. Mm -hmm. That's not what we that's not what we have here. You know what I'm saying? It's like mm -hmm. it's just it's just, you know, you can't any anybody that's like super famous, you look at those people and you're like, oh man, they got really lucky. And it's like, man, you do not see all the hard work that went behind exactly. a fucking Taylor Swift. You know what I'm saying? Or 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 even in hip hop, in the world of hip hop, you don't see all the hard work that goes behind yeah. a Drake. So you just true. see Drake 
being like, you know, naturally smooth or whatever the fuck he is. You know what I'm saying? You just see that. But you don't you, all 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 that behind the scenes shit, that shit is no joke. You know what I'm saying? Like Dude, when I when I think about work rate and tolerance and the first person i do think of is drake because i feel for him he gets absolutely bully beaten with trolling and always these and i know a lot of these memes are probably generated but still at the same time it's like are you ready for the whip are you ready for the slap back on it are you ready to get dissed it's like he's he's just always being gunned harsh <laughs> i mean i you know i gotta be honest i i i uh... I hate to say this out loud, but I kind of stopped paying attention to a lot of shit. I don't even know anymore. Mm -hmm. I, and, and when I said his name, even I was like, damn, is he the right name to say? Cause I don't even know anymore. Like, like I, I just mm -hmm. know that I, 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 I know that it's not, it's not what, it's not what we, it's not what we present. It's not what we, 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 we've, we've gone out of our way to, to, to really make people feel like they can't do it too. That's right. And it and needs to stop. And the, yeah. Cause the truth is you can do it too. And yes. and there are plenty of artists, myself included, who on different levels on this spectrum have done it too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's like for sure. But that also comes from a place of hip hop. Um, the DIY oh, yeah. of independent hip hop back in the late night is still applying, still applicable now and back and earlier into the eighties. Um, making something out of nothing. Uh, making something out of there. nothing. You know? That's, yeah. That's the, perfect. That's a beautiful way to, to 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 describe it. And and also the, you know. I, I, there's always been the sensibility of like I gotta prove that I'm cooler than the dude standing next to me. There's the competition of you know I'm 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 the man tonight. Tonight here yeah. I'm the man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's always been pre present in battling. <clears throat> it's always been present in DJing and in, in, in just the uh, just in this culture of of mm. of, of kind of of making something out of nothing. It's almost like you know the world has stripped me of everything I got. Mm. So I'm going to present myself as the biggest thing in the world. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. I'm, push, I'm pushing back on that feeling of because when you say making something out of nothing, we're also talking about people who had 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 you know had been had had so much. Were were were, were I mean the South Bronx, which was like yeah. you know uh, uh, like 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 a like a like 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 a photo of oppression. You know what I'm saying? It's Big like, time. It, yeah. and so it's like to, to see something this beautiful come out of that. That tells you a lot. That tells you about how this, 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 this thing, like, it, it, it presents. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It presented. It presented. It, it showed out. It presented, and and it won. Yeah. And so and so, I guess you know, there there is a there is a gift to being the man. There is a gift. To, there is a there's a there's a smooth part about being like, hey, I'm I'm cooler than you. I get that. But I also want to make sure that like, I don't know, man. That that. What were we talking about? We know we're talking about, we're actually talking about persistence. I think that is the key word to this. And making something out of nothing and going for broke, just going for it. Because that's what, yeah, I took a good analogy as graffiti writers. They just, you know, if you're talking about a marketing campaign and building something from DIY scratch up, was, I think graffiti definitely holds the... <laughs> Oh my! The football hooligan equivocal of what the you know the, that rappers do. You know what I mean? But the, sure. you know it's more than battle rap. It's just going for it and just putting your name up. It's just the ultimate marketing campaign, isn't it? It is. You know, and 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 it's 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 crazy to imagine how all of it, even though they were separate, it wasn't like you know Cool Herc showed up and was like, "Here's hip hop, here's graffiti, here's mm -hmm. rapping." You know what I'm saying? They all came from these other spaces. You know, graffiti was coming from this space of uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, com communication, uh, yeah, uh, rep representation. Uh, uh, but also, you know, you're looking at the pieces and looking at how uh, how much work I put into that and how they did yeah. that one night and it's beautiful or this that to straight up just uh, tags even. You know what I'm saying? Representation. Yeah. And then combining with breakdancing at the same time, combining with rapping, combining with DJing, you know what I mean? Like all of incredible. that together is, is, it's a pretty incredible thing. Yeah. Like I can't, of, I can't name anything else, you know, no. in my, in my, in my little brain that I, that I could think of that I would compare to this. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Um, sticking with persistence though. Uh, what is, uh, so many other realities exist? What, what number album is that atmosphere? Uh, do you want me to Wikipedia that? I don't know, man. <laughs> you, I, I mean, just off that. How many albums? Off, How off many the top albums? Of my head? Well, you know what? I I intentionally years ago Stop started counting. joke. I, well, I started joking and saying it's the seventh album, and I said it every time, so many times that I've lost track of how many. <laughs> 
So yeah, I yeah, could yeah. I could Wikipedia, but if I tried to just go through and count them, I'll forget something. Are we talking like? And also the other thing is we've done a lot of really dumb shit. So like, it's like we got a lot of EPs, we got double EPs. Like what? Oh, are we, I hate what, the what? dumb shit. I always feel bad about the dumb shit. I feel like yeah, they're, yeah. The, they're the orphans of my my Ooh. crop. What makes it an album? You know what I mean? So I, I don't even know. So now we just go, hey, we got a bunch of projects. Yeah. There's a there's a ton of projects that we've done, you know? Yeah. And and through, the, I mean, your, your demographic of audience change, because that's another huge part of a, of a legacy, is that, you know, ebbs and flows, new people come in and catch you on an album that that maybe is definitive, but then uh, 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 el- elder audience and fans will see that you know the late 90s to the mid noughties to the do you know what I mean that's such a privileged place to be isn't it it's uh privilege is a great word for that man and, and thank you for asking that and, and I feel like very fortunate that we've been able to you know because even for me it goes back further it was you know really important to my developmental stages even as a young kid, but also as an artist, um, how from Run DMC until now is all me. It's all a part of me. Mm. Everything, everything since then I've done my best to consume much more in the earlier years than the later years. But it's like at 17, of course, that's going to be your sweet spot as far as how you Mm -hmm. identified yourself through your art. You know what I mean? And so it's like, that was 1988 for me. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. 1989, that was, that was my sweet spot. Um, But, but, but prior to that, maybe even before run dmc and i just didn't know that my parents were slowly indoctrinating me just by playing disco and you know early sugar hill stuff in front of me you know no, what I mean? that's but, good but, but by run dmc i knew this was not my dad's music this is mm. mine you know my, my dad didn't even like run dmc you know what i mean mm. but my dad was into early rap because it was like curtis blow he was rapping over disco breaks and my dad was like yeah i like the bass line and shit you know what i mean like yeah that's by the time run dmc happened it was like i think that shit made my dad flinch you know he's probably like ah what the <laughs> fuck is this shit man it's not music uh, this is going a bit too far now yeah, and it's funny because it pushed him from listening to like funk and disco uh, all the way. Run DMC made my dad turn to smooth jazz. I will wow. always I, <laughs> well, I, I will always I will always I will I will never forget that when my dad t- turned to listening to like, you know, the 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 older Quincy Jones records. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, just too much brutality to the ears. It's just, you, there was a come down of like, I just need to go and, you know, the visual equivocal of see some rabbits being stroked. Yeah, he just was like, why, why are these kids yelling at me right now? You know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's what I signed up for, man. <laughs> it's funny, though, because when I hear my son's music, and I'm 50 now, and, and, and when I'm talking to my father, you know, he was probably like, not, he was probably like 30 mm. when I think Run DMC, Run DMC probably pushed him away from rap. Mm. Uh, but now at 50 I hear stuff that my kid plays and I'm not mad at it you know what I'm saying I hear it and I'm just like oh okay I don't know who it is uh, uh, sometimes I do because he's got pretty good taste I think um, but sometimes I don't know who that is and I know it's some newer stuff and I and I hear it and I'm thinking man I'm probably not supposed to like this mm. but but I can hear that this probably still scares old white people so I think so I'm this down is, yeah, this yeah. is good yeah I'm saying it's like it, it challenges it, it it challenges the the quota, you know what I mean? The status quo. It challenges the status quo, which is vital for any anarchic teenager to just get involved. To, to have their parents like it is almost like sacrilege. But but that being said, um, maybe there's a cultural shift. Particularly, I'm 44, so we're of the same age bracket, and I would say that the way that we dress, the what, the things that we like, and the appreciation that we have for new music, unlike our elders is seismic, seismically different where does that come from i mean for you and me probably because i mean i'm assuming you collected records all day yeah yeah and so even your um and you didn't collect records like your dad did i'm willing to bet no and it, it's different and yeah. and so your appreciation for music is that you actually understand all of the work that went in, into making that one record much less all 10,000 of your records, et cetera. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, whereas a lot of people that listen to music, especially now, it doesn't even require that much work to get music played. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't have to go through, it doesn't, you know, back in the day, you used to turn in your record and then 18 months later, it would get released. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's a whole whole different world now. And so yeah. I, I think your appreciation just for the fact that the music exists 
you know what it took for that to exist. Uh, you know, okay, you had to get some people together in a room, mm-hmm. and they had to get, had to collaborate and come together on on an idea, you know, and 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 move with it. You know, I think a lot of people that just use music to to drive to, or use music to do their dishes to, or use music to like party to, don't mm. have to think about all the all the work that went into that music. The layers, yeah. Talking of layers, actually, you know, this is a nice segue here. Um, so on the new album, well, it's a couple of favourites. Um, in my head is great. Crop Circles is just what, like if, if we're talking about Massive Attack and Bought His Head and, you know, all these ninja tune, uh, uh, you know, it's just there. Um, um, it just... <sighs> That has that has that developed? It sounds to me actually like a lot of the songs have a have a level of um, live performance going on in, in instrumentation. Am I right in thinking that? Because it does feel like it's got its own energy. There is a good amount of live instrumentation on that record, um, or on that album, I should say. Uh, he, I, I I I would have to point at specific songs, but because there's there's sampling, there's live instruments, there's. I mean, I think there's drums off of an old organ. You know what I mean? Like, there's just lots of things going on that uh, I think Anthony was kind of like, I, in fact, I think I heard him say this, and so I, I don't feel bad kind of quoting it. Mm-hmm. Um, he said he had the opportunity to just throw the kitchen sink at this one. It does feel like it feels rich. It, well, it was a setup. You know, in 2020, we put out, uh, or late 2019, early 2020, I can't remember. We put out an album called Whenever. That was not even really an album. It was supposed to be a soundtrack for a television show. They had uh, basically asked us to create a soundtrack for a show. And so we made these songs and then the deal fell through at the 11th hour. Um, So we weren't really complaining because we still had the songs. They were ours. You know what I mean? And so Mm -hmm. we decided to release it as an album. And after that, we were like, well, what should we do next? We, you know, uh, the lockdown had occurred and we had also during the course of that created all of these like kind of synthy electronic bumpers to go underneath as beds, underneath actual scenes, acting moments. So there were songs that went with the show so that you could have songs for the credits and songs for certain spots. But then there were all these musical beds and bumpers that Ant had created just all synth out. And he gave them to me as is, as he had created them for the bumpers. And I just took them and wrote to him as is. And that became the Halloween record that we put out shortly thereafter the, the day before. Got you. Okay. And then with doing all that, we had bought ourselves some time to sit down and actually construct an album. And so we were like, what should we make? And so that's when we made an album called Word, which was all based, all sample based. Mm. Um, and also lots of guests. Like I had lots of friends on that. Nice. And then that bought us more time. And so that's why we started this. And this one we spent some time making. We started this record uh, in 2020 of August. And I think that, yeah, the first beat he gave me was August 2020. And then the last beat he gave me was probably um, spring of 2021. No, I'm sorry. Um, spring of 2022. Because we're in 2023 now. Yeah. Oh, mm. so, so like a little over a year and a half we spent putting this together um, as far as writing. Wow. And, and, creating and we made it in sequence so he gave me the first beat in august of 2020 and then he didn't give me the next beat till i turned that song in so when i turned in the first song in the album which was a song called okay then he went okay here's what i want this to go next and he would give me the music for that next and then he would curate it he would do things like the beginning of track two starts with this like sample of him saying okay okay and he did that on purpose yeah. because I'd, I'd already turned in a song called okay so he was trying to figure out how to like the challenge was for him to be able to create in, in in a long piece in sequence and get me to write it as he goes. And mm-hmm. I think that, you know, I think that we did the best thing that we could under the circumstances. You what, know, like what, what a concept. I love that. It was fun. And it was, it, it infected us because everything we've worked on since this album, because you got to understand, I turned this album in, you know, spring of last year mm. and it's going to finally come out spring of this year. So in the interim, I've still been working. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and so the stuff that we've been making since it's like, we're really just tripping. Like it's, we're still kind of, we, yeah. it's like every time you put a new challenge on yourself, which we've done a lot over the years, but over the last 10 years specifically, we don't let go of that one. We just now find another one to stack on top of that. Yeah. yeah. That kind of speaks to what I was talking about before when I was saying, Hey, you got to find challenges. And so that's right. So that's a, it's just kind of a, it's just kind of the thing that we, that's, it's our new dumb shit. It's like record shopping on tour. It's just like that new dumb shit. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I do know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. Like, dude, how yeah. did you spend? How did you spend? How did you spend all your performance guarantees before you even got home? I mean, I got all these cool records, you know. Yeah. It's like. Uh, it's, it's only per DMs. No, it doesn't. It bleeds all into your savings. It bleeds all into your money when you come home. It's fucking and and then you got to pay excess on on uh, on baggage handling. <laughs> oh man, don't even tell me about it. Yeah, the, the, here's this. The, the catch is this: at the you just try to make sure your tour is ending somewhere where you can ship them home from. You know, oh, really? the, the the tour we're about to go in. I I'm not going to be shipping anything home from Oslo, but. I'm going to try to wait until our last day in Germany. And then I'm going to go find a German record store and be like, here, I'll give you this. Boom, 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 boom. You ship these here. And, and to them, it's just like you just bought a box of shit on Discogs. They're like, oh, yeah, shipping <laughs> is going to be 20 euros or something. You know what I mean? Like ship it yeah, slow. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll just go home and hope it shows up, you know. But you're coming to London as well, right? You're, we're coming. You're... We're starting in London. Yeah. Our Get first show's in. There. I think that's on the 11th of May. Uh, yeah, I suck right. at my, I'm really bad at my job. but I'm, I'm in there with bells and whistles, brother. I'm there. Man, fuck yeah, for sure. I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Um, what keeps you going? What keeps you going, brother? Well, I mean, it's the best job I've ever had. First, you know, I've had a lot of jobs. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I was a late bloomer. I, I entered rap. I was, I was. I mean, by the time I met you, I was 27, and so, and I still had not quite bloomed. I didn't bloom until about 30 years old with God Loves Ugly. And mm-hmm. at that point, I'd had so many jobs that some were great, some sucked. But I had just I had an idea of what what was what was there for me, what my potential was. Mm-hmm. And so this just it had the highest ceiling of potential. It was the most fun. It's the most validating. You know, it's cool when you do something and somebody who is in a higher rank than you validates you and says, good job. Or Here's, says, man. Good, yeah. Or good job. Here's a raise, whatever. But you mm-hmm. still know that you're helping somebody above you or even two or three rungs above you succeed. And yeah. and so this has been validating in all those aspects. And it really plays into my control freak nature, you know, what I mean? mm-hmm. to be able to have like final say over what I think I, I like that. Mm. It's everything, um, isn't it? Above all that, I just love making music. I love writing songs. I love cracking the code. Uh, if Anthony gives me a beat and I can listen to it on repeat for for an hour and then figure out what what the song is telling me the story is supposed to be and then me actually successfully writing that story, like there is not much like that. You know, the funny thing is I write right here where I'm sitting right now and mm-hmm. I'm by myself. So that means I get to write about whatever I want. I could be as vulnerable as I want. I could be as vulgar as I want. I could do whatever the hell I want. And then I decide, am I going to let anybody else hear this? And if I am, it's Anthony. And if Anthony reacts in one of the, like, let's say, five reactions that validates me, then I know I can play it for somebody else. So if he laughs or if he gets uncomfortable or, you know, if I could tell that he feels this in like almost like a cinematic kind of way in any Mm. way whatsoever, then I know, okay, this can go on to the next step, you know? And honestly, I guess weirdly, that's what I've been doing for so long up until this project with this project, you know, we didn't allow any throwaways. If I brought anything to him that he was like, uh, it's almost there. Mm. or 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 even nah that ain't it then i would go back to the drawing board with it and try to crack the code of that song you know what i'm saying Mm. and so so with that you know i do think that this this album does stand on its own in just that this might be the first time that if he liked something but i didn't i was still like nah cool put it on there keep it you know, mm. because because I know that there's a curation going on here. I think he would have did the same for me if there was something that I was like, I really love this. And he I'm was standing like, by this kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was like, I don't like it, but he probably would have let me put it on there. You know what mm. I mean? And so that that and so I think that even kind of maybe is another code cracked just in our relationship as artists. We trust each other so much that even if our own ears are like, nah, this ain't it. Yeah. But I trust your ears. So if you're like, this is it. All right, you know what? Like, because it represents you too. You know what I'm saying? We, and we feel that way towards each other. Like, this represents both of us. So if one of us is like, no, this really is doing a good job of representing me. All right, man. Let, let's go. I stand by it. I'll try to I'll try to perform that shit. <laughs> I'll yeah. get on stage and try to do that shit. Yeah. yeah, totally. I think that's why there's so much movement within the album. It's got it's a real journey to it. I guess it's because the the um the um the bars were, were lifted. I guess with with 
both of you uh blessing that yeah okay i really want this one on or i really must have this on you know egos were put cast aside and it was what was more uh of the wish and uh subjective to i guess the journey of the whole project right I would say that, yeah, you know, and here's the thing, it's it's impossible to fully push egos aside. So if I really try to flex my brain and think about it, I'm sure there's probably at least a time that I'm that we were like I want to convince you that I'm right. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's yeah. not always like yeah, it's not always just like okay, you know what I mean? Like but 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 also what As is it's that? you, okay. <laughs> Yeah. But, <laughs> Comment below, but, by the way, Anthony. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're watching. <laughs> but 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 uh but 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 just knowing each other well enough to know, a that person uh wants this what needs needs this more than I need it. Yeah, you know, for him yeah. to be able to look at me and recognize when I I really need this win, I think that he's the kind of friend that'd be like, man, that's yours all day. You know, mm. or if I'm looking at his, if I'm looking at his plate and he has a piece of cake on there that I'm like, oh my god, I really want that piece of cake. I can't believe you got the last piece of cake. I think he would just give me the piece of cake, and I think mm. vice versa. You know what I'm saying? So, and I'll that's just that. again testament to the friendship. We've we've been making music since together since 1995. So we're coming. Whoa, on, 95, huh? Coming on 30 years together. Yeah. I mean, I said plus 26 years. I ain't giving you. There's not enough distance in that. 30 years. That's amazing, man. It might have even been 94. I'm trying to. It was probably 95, though. I think I met him. I think I met him in early 95. I did a song with him accidentally, not accidentally, but I was, I was with a rapper. There was a rapper that was like, Hey man, I want to make, I want to make a song with you. I got a song I want to do with you. It's like, all right. So we wrote our parts and he's like, all right, come over to my producer's house. <laughs> and he had played me beats first. You know, it was like, here, we're going to use this beat. So I was like, all right, yep. I can rap to that, whatever, whatever. So he's like, all right, come over to my producer's house. So I went over to his producer's house and his producer was Ant. Wow. And that's, and that's how I met him in a basement over, over by little earth. <laughs> Dude, marriages have lasted less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> that's incredible and and again just testament to the album and it, when is it out when does the album come out is it out may, now the, the 5th of may 5th of may a couple more weeks wow so well we're definitely going to get patterned up in time for that and god speed it, it has the same success as um, your trajectory thus far with releases man it's been fantastic chatting with you my brother I appreciate it man thank you very much thanks for having me on uh, it's good to see you man I, yeah, I, I, you too you're smiling you're doing good I like to see that bro Hey, I'm a happy camper, man. When I'm, when I, when, you know, in this journey, when you, you cross paths with a person for the sake of time, knowing full well that that journey ain't easy. It's just a blessing, man. It's really great to see you, brother. Right on, man. Back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast outlaws in was out of fashion. Got nag it. Um. So yeah, if you want to know more, you know what to do. To actually tell them, tell them where they go. Go slug. Oh, go to atmosphere-sucks.com. That's yeah. that's where, that's the catch all for everything. I'm on Instagram. Uh, um, I, I think I'm on Facebook. I don't fucking know. I'm, I think I'm on TikTok now. I, I that that was that was the rumor. But but at, but uh, I, you know whatever. Just just Google that shit. Just yeah. Google that shit. Go get it. All right. So many other realities exist, and believe me, they do way beyond social media. Get it in the woman and never listen. All right. Hey, outlighting was out of fashion. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't kill a killer podcast. Stay lucky, people. Peace! Brother, that was dope. Thank you so much. Right on, man. That was fun.